Hi, Lloyd Reber here to demonstrate a follow-up to a project I showed in a previous video that I called Walk the Dog. I ended that video with this example of a simple activity involving this young fellow. The goal of this demonstration is to introduce people who have never programmed before to coding within live code. By following this video, you should be able to build this project yourself. But I suggest you watch the video at least once all the way through before launching live code and trying it for yourself. Okay, let me refresh your memory about how this little project works. So uh, I can take this young fellow for uh, some walks. If I click and hold, we see that he gets happy that it gets the attention and I can drag him around the screen and uh, he likes that. So let's, let's go and uh, take him for uh, some to run some errands. So I take him to the bank. Ah, you see that uh, he says, thanks for taking me to the bank. Here's five dollars for your trouble. So we can walk around some more, maybe go to the grocery store. And he says, thanks for taking me to the grocery store. Here's a tomato for your trouble. So yeah, how do we do this? Again, in the previous video, I showed how to skin an object so that we can have different uh, graphics appear. This one just happens to look like the same fellow each time where he gets a little happier when I click on him. So I'm not going to talk about that. You can go back to the previous video to see how that's done. What I'm interested in talking about here is, yeah, how do I, how do, I do this little interaction that seems to notice where I am uh, placing this fellow on the screen? Okay, well, let me show, first of all, something about these other two objects that are here. I'm going to go into edit mode. And if I just double click on this bank, which is no more than a square with the name bank on it, you can see that it is a, also a button and it has a name bank. And if I go down to grocery and click on it, you notice that it is also a button and the name is grocery. Um, I'm pointing this out because the name of the object and what type of object it is, is going to be very important for what I'm going to show you next. So all of the code to make this work is on the button of this man. So I'm going to go ahead and click on him and go up to code, open up the code window. So here we have it. I'll just move this off to the side for now. And in the last video I showed just how simple it was to move an object on the screen with the on mouse down command using the grab me function or grab me command. And that is how it works when I hold the mouse down uh, then and only then am I able to move the man around. When I let go of the mouse button, he obviously uh, kind of snaps into that particular place. So th that's, that was a very easy command to show. Uh, so all of this code is exactly the same, and this idea of setting the icon of me, and me being the button, which is it's all relative to whatever object that you put a command like that into, that's how you are able to skin the object. And I have those graphics of him in the neutral um, perspective and in the happy perspective or expression on a different on a different uh, uh, card and again I showed that in a previous video so what's what's different here well if I come down on the mouse up I am going to then check for collision so I have a commented out line here just to remind me that the code that follows is all about collisions so yeah so you can see then I have two if then statements one here and one here. And so you can kind of get a sense of it right away just because there you see bank and grocery. So what we have here is a command uh, intersect. And you can see that it has in parentheses some important information. So the first two um, uh, parts of the, of the uh, intersect command is, well, what am I looking to see if they are colliding or, or touching? And in a moment I'll talk more about what it means to touch. But it's me, which again refers to the button of the man, and the button bank, okay, and with a comma in between. And you also see then uh, with another comma, and then I have in quotes, this condition, which is opaque pixels. And I'll talk more about that in just a second. But if they are um, going to be uh, overlapping or colliding or intersecting, then and only then am I going to put this message thanks for taking me to the bank, here's $5 for your trouble. 
into a field called message and I'll show you where that field is in just a second same thing here uh, with the with the grocery uh, store if if those two objects uh, are intersecting then and only then I am going to show this um, message thanks for taking me to the grocery store here's a tomato for your trouble in fact why don't we change that to an apple for your trouble again into the field message so in fact I'll apply that and let's just see if that little change works and by the way uh, before I go any further if I click here you'll see that there actually is a field there and the field is called message maybe to make that a little bit more obvious if I go well I have the field uh, message properties chosen if I go to colors and patterns I can choose the fill of that to be a light gray and I have to change that also to opaque so I go back to the basic properties and change that to opaque so now you can see the field a little bit better I kinda like it with a white background but uh, this makes it easier to see so yeah let me go ahead now and uh, try this go into run mode and I'll go back to the bank yep here's your five dollars for your trouble how about now to the grocery store aha here's an apple for your trouble okay well let's let's do one more uh, uh, place to go as just to kind of show exactly how this works and I'll talk a little bit more about how uh, or what the opaque pixels means all right well, let me put the young fellow back in the center here so the message goes away and let me bring back up the coding window here so again let me just explain a little bit about this opaque pixels first of all uh, if you haven't explored the dictionary you should this is almost like having a whole reference manual at your fingertips so if I click on dictionary move the inspector out of the way here uh, you do have the online dictionary of every single command function you name it so if I just scroll down there's a lot of them okay so in this case I'm gonna type in the one I know and quite frankly many times if you just type in a keyword you'll be pleasantly surprised that you might even stumble up upon the right the right command and there are three there and you could explore them all but the one I know that we want is this function it actually is a function so I'll click on that and now you can see that down below uh, I can make this a little bit more space there you have a nice introduction to what that is all about and there's the syntax so it gives you very quickly how you're supposed to use this so you can kinda of see intersect you have the two parentheses then the two objects that you are looking to see do they intersect and this will return as it says here under summary it returns a true if the two objects overlap otherwise it returns false and then you have this uh, this option here for a threshold so let's take a look at the threshold by the way you always get some examples I find those often to be very helpful and if they were really helpful I could just copy and paste them into my code but yeah if I come down you'll see here that we have a, um, a parameter called threshold and it says the amount of transparency that pixels in the objects must have in order to be counted during the intersect calculation um, in short you have a lot of control over when a collision will be detected and so an alpha is just the the the, uh, uh, the degree to which the object is uh, transparent and if you wanted one uh, an object that was completely transparent you could choose an alpha of zero or if it's completely opaque you could choose an alpha of 255 I tend to almost always use opaque objects in projects involving collisions which is very common so much so that live code gives you the option of opaque pixels the idea is that we want live code to only detect a collision when the pixels of the two objects are overlapping and I say that because you could also imagine that object being in a rectangle and do you want just the rectangle to be noticed in the collision so for example if I click on this fellow you can see the the points of the rectangle and so do you want those areas there to be included uh, in the uh, collision detection well generally speaking I would say no so for example when I come up here and I get very close to the bank and notice that I'm being very careful to keep 
the man away from the bank so that there's just a little bit of space well that is obviously within the rectangle of the man but it's only when some part actually uh, intersects the actual pixels do I actually have the collision uh, detected and the intersect command then and only then sh uh, returns a value of true so again I'll just bring up the dictionary page again and again what I tend to use is this opaque pixels uh, more often than not so that's what I use here in this particular example alright let me close the dictionary so let's go ahead and bring in another uh, example let's say this young fellow's running some errands but you know like a lot of people who, uh, he enjoys a, a nice ice cream on a summer day so let's go ahead and uh, make another object and I'll just kind of choose the uh, the bank here I'll go ahead and copy that and I'll paste that bring it over here and I'm going to change the name of this to ice cream and I will go ahead and change the color of this little ice cream shop I'll change it to a nice yellow there we go so again it's very important that I take a note that I take note of what the name of the object is ice cream okay well now let's go into the code for this young fellow the button of him to add some uh, collision detection with the intersect function for the ice cream store okay and before I go into the code again just look one more time what the name is here ice cream uh, with a space in between all right so let me bring the code window up again I already I still have the code of the man in my window so I can just bring that back up although I think it's helpful what if I didn't have it there let me just go back and show again if I needed to take a look at the code of that button make sure the button is selected then just choose the code button up there all right so again I can uh, I can just press return here at the end and I could start typing so you know if intersect and then uh, maybe uh, the two parentheses then and if and then I could go ahead and put this in here I'll copy that thanks uh, well let's see what should we type in for that maybe let's enjoy an ice cream exclamation mark so we're almost there we just have to put in this stuff inside the parentheses so I might as well take advantage of the fact that I have one that works so I will copy that from the grocery store and paste it in but of course I have to change the uh, button name from grocery to ice cream and I don't think in fact I'm really sure that uh, it is not case sensitive so the fact that I have lowercase versus uppercase doesn't matter good habits so we should use the same case but just to kind of prove a point here I'll put it in in lowercase let's hit the apply alright got a green uh, got a green light that means my code is valid at least my logic may be wrong but at least the code is valid let's go back up here and let's just check the bank again that's good check the grocery store again that's good now let's try the ice cream yes let's enjoy an ice cream oh now notice though that the ice cream it uh, is on top of this fellow uh, the ice cream building how can I solve that problem because I really would like the fellow to be on top well the reason is that I made that object last and the last object would always be toward the front so no problem what I can do is click on the edit button click on the ice cream bring over the inspector I see that we have the ice cream chosen the at that button object let me go to size and position and it's really handy that we have these uh, little arrows down here and this one says send to back the one next to it is just move backward one step at a time but I definitely want this just to be at the back so I'll go ahead and click on that so it changes this layer so that now when I run this you see that the young fellow is on top of each one of these alright great so let me just bring up the code window one more time 
move this out of the way and you can see that I can build lots of interesting little projects where I am going to be interested in whether or not I have a collision or intersection between them and if I do I can do some interesting things and just to prove that point that you can do some interesting things let me show you another variant of this project one that is a little bit more sophisticated I like to kind of whet your appetites to see how we can do something again a little bit more sophisticated okay let me bring up that other project okay and here it is and you probably are saying well it looks very similar but there are some I think quick differences for example we have this zero dollar message up here I wonder what that's all about the fellow looks a little bit different he has his arms crossed and you'll see that when I click and move him he just goes into the neutral position he doesn't get all happy and you'll see why in just a second so yeah let's uh, let's take him around to do some errands and if you're like me you probably want to go get ice cream right away let's go and get some ice cream oh no you, you have no, no money to spend and you need ten dollars for your ice cream kind of expensive ice cream and he's rather upset about that so he goes back and thinks it over and says oh I know the bank is right around the corner let me go to the bank and yes he's very happy he withdrew two, $100 from his account now let's go back and get some ice cream yes he enjoys that has a great ice cream he spent ten dollars and you see that it went from 100 down to 90 alright maybe we'll go get another ice cream oh that was really good I don't know how he keeps in uh, such a slim figure there <laughs> as after all but now it's time to go and do some grocery shopping hopefully he'll buy some good healthy foods he goes to the grocery store yikes he needed one hundred dollars to uh, buy his groceries so again he is a little upset so let's go back to the bank withdraw another one hundred dollars and you just kind of see how the the uh, running total is going to update itself yeah so now I went shopping he's very happy and again he is down now to eighty dollars and so you can see that it's a very similar project but now I'm giving some con um, contextual feedback and I have some kind of a rule that the, the program is following I also have um, obviously a different use of the of the graphics in fact if I go to the next slide you will see that I have these four characters right here and I actually made some changes to the even the neutral and the uh, the fellow who is uh, quite happy because uh, you might notice that there was a little bit of of, of where, where the arm the crook of the arm there and I had forgotten to take out the the white uh, pixels that are in there so for example if I go back now to that other slide let me view previous you'll see that if I go over there that I actually see the orange between uh, between the arms so that was just one little change I made that you know a little improvement okay well in my next video I will show you exactly how I did this uh, this programming in order to have this more interactive project and uh, it's a little more sophisticated in the coding scheme but I don't think it's anything you can't handle well that's all there is to it it's now your turn. Download your free version of Live Code Community Edition and try building this little project for yourself. Look for other FIRST project examples and tutorials on my website.